I want you guys to start this video with just taking a simple breath. Nothing special about it. You probably didn't feel any special emotion. It's just another breath, another day. And to be honest, that's the way life typically is. We go about doing the daily things without really taking much notice of them. But what if I told you that that would be your very last breath? I can assure you, you would feel a whole different range of emotions. You'd probably feel appreciative for the air you breathe, for the moment you were here. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves that every single moment could be its last. It could be the last sunset you ever enjoy on a beach in Thailand. It could be the very final moment you get to say goodbye to your best friend. And it could be your very last breath, your very last moment here on earth. Now why do I talk about all this? Well, unfortunately, it's because I was so abruptly reminded this reality on July 4th. And the story goes a little bit like this. July 3rd, Katy and I had been at a wedding for one of my best friends in the interior of the province and we had about a five hour journey to get back to Vancouver area and so we were exhausted. We spent the night driving and later that night we got a message from the High on Life guys. They had invited us to join them on an awesome excursion. They sent me some photos of this commonly known waterfall but in a very uncommonly known spot. There was kind of like this little hidden wave pool and it just looks Instagram worthy. It was the exact kind of activity I would have done any other day, but that day we were so exhausted after a long journey. Between Katy and I, we were actually debating whether we just suck it up, go into exhaustion and just join them early first thing in the morning, driving in to meet them for their waterfall excursion. We decided not to, we let our tiredness get the best of us and we decided that we would just meet them later that evening. So later that day, July 4th, Katy and I went to meet up with the guys and we were gonna wait for them downtown until they got back from the waterfall. And it had been about an hour after the time we were supposed to meet. And at this point, we had shot each of them a message. Yeah, well, it's gonna get cold. We're going on the highway, so now we're ready. It was really strange because I knew the guys pretty well. Not super well, but I knew them well enough to know that they weren't the type to just like go MIA and not answer. And so about an hour and a half more had passed. It'd been like two and a half hours after the time we were supposed to meet. And um, naturally, at, at this point, my mind was like, okay, could they be out of reception? Could they have dead phones? What's the possible outcomes here? Um, I ended up getting a response from uh, Riker's Instagram, and uh, it wasn't from Riker. It was from a friend of Riker's who was also there with him. Hello, friends and family. On July 3rd, 2018, we lost three very dear friends of ours, Riker Gamble, Alexi Lyak, and Megan Scraper. The coroner is investigating whether three social media stars killed at Shannon Falls near Squamish on Tuesday. We are here at the bottom of Shannon Falls. About three quarters of the way up is where the three hikers fell to their deaths. And so tragically, that was the, the end of their lives. Three amazing, incredible people. They meant so much to so many people. That is my side of the story. I cannot even imagine the anguish that the family, the close friends must have felt and still be feeling to this very same day. Uh, they were three of the warmest, kindest, most driven and outgoing people that you could ever meet. And the world has lost a great deal of light with their passing. Just last month, there was the memorial held for the three of them at Stanley Park and I have to say, for such a tragedy, they could not have given those three people a more beautiful send-off, a more beautiful remembrance of life. There were many tears, but there were many great memories shared.
Now it may be the most cliche question of all time, but I really challenge you to ask yourself this question. What would you do if you literally had one year starting right now to be left here on this earth? Would you continue to follow the same paths? Would you continue on with the same friendships, the same job, or would you follow that passion project of yours? Would you pull those friends that really meant something special to you closer? Would you let go of certain relationships? Hey, what's up, dude? Yeah! Now I'm sure with that question posed, you probably have a lot of different things that you would be changing in your life during that one year period. But my question to you is, why would you wait till that one year period to make these changes? If I could be so bold, I believe the reason that so many of us push off our passions, our ideas, our dreams into the land of tomorrow is because we don't have a ticking timer right above our head. But here's the shocking reality, is that you really do. Some people might have a year, some people might have a decade, and some people might only have a few fleeting moments left. But just because you can't see your timer doesn't mean it's not there. Yes, it's an incredibly grim reality, but it could not have been reminded to me in a more powerful way that our time here is limited and it's up to us to make the most of what we are given. While you can walk, while you can see, while you can talk, you should wholeheartedly be chasing these passions, these ambitions and dreams. Today's video is not just for people who aren't currently working their aspirational careers, who aren't currently working their dream jobs. Today's video is really for you. For some of you, it might be getting in shape. It's something that you've been thinking about for ages but have never committed to doing. Others, it could be reconciling damaged relationships. Maybe there's a friend or a family member that you've been dying to have back in your life, but you haven't taken the actions necessary to repair that relationship. For others, it could be asking that girl or a guy on a date. In some shape or form, this video applies to every single one of our lives and instead of just identifying the issue I'd rather give you some solutions some small steps to get the big picture going whether it means landing your dream career getting the date or getting in shape these are some things that you can start doing right here right now today to accomplish your passions your dreams and your ambitions the first thing you need to do is identify your priorities and your ambitions. The best way to ask yourself this question is literally to envision something as grim as you being on your deathbed five years from now. What would be the things that you regretted not having acted on? The things that you wished you had dedicated your life to? The first things that come to your mind are probably the things that matter to you most. What I highly recommend and even implore you to do is get a whiteboard. Write those things down and put it in an area where you're going to pass by every single day. Could be your bed Room, could be your kitchen have those priorities written out that way every single time you wake up and you go to bed you're likely passing by this whiteboard and you're reminded what you're supposed to be doing every single day to work towards that dream and ambition I've actually met some people that have taken it even a step further and they've actually taken their phone gone into their notes application written down those goals screenshotted them and then made them their phone background now not only are you seeing it when you go home but you're actually seeing it every single time you open your phone and I'm not sure if you know how many times you open the phone in a given day but it's a lot now that we've identified our goals that's great but the thing is they don't exactly do themselves so we need to create an action plan most meaningful goals will not be accomplished overnight. Some of them will take months and others will even take years. Now I totally understand that not all of us have equal playing grounds. Some of us have dependents, we have family members we support. Others of us, we may have what feels like insurmountable amounts of student debt. Whatever your circumstances are, it doesn't stop you from creating a game plan, a strategy. Get out a whiteboard and you write down what are going to be the things you do on a daily basis, on a weekly basis, a yearly basis to ensure that you're working yourself towards that goal. I wanted to give you a walkthrough of what a game plan would look like for somebody that wants to be a filmmaker, has absolutely no experience and no skill in the field, and doesn't even have a camera. For me, it would look a little something like this. I would want my daily game plan to be to spend at least 15 minutes to 20 minutes watching a tutorial on YouTube. Maybe spending another 30 minutes to 45 minutes every single day shooting with my iPhone, with my Android, whatever device I have in my pocket. If it has a camera, it's a great starting point. From there, you can use free softwares to begin to learn the basics of editing. And if you allocated an hour every single day, seven days a week, you would become pretty good pretty quick. Now my weekly game plan would be to take my two days off, my weekend, and try and shoot a video, a film, 
every single week. I'm sure your first video would be just absolutely horrible, but that would be the cool thing about it, was that every single week you had a brand new video, whether it's a cinematic video, whether it's a story about your commute to work, you can create mini films just for yourself or put them on YouTube, which I highly recommend. And the awesome thing is you could track your progress as you become a better filmmaker. My three month plan would be to have set aside enough money throughout those three months to go out there and buy your first real camera. Whether it's a DSLR or a mirrorless camera, get yourself a camera, ideally with a detachable lens, and get yourself that first setup. My six month goal would be to volunteer on a commercial shoot. Be able to surround yourself with professionals and see how they do things. My one year game plan would be to have a website and to be doing freelance work, actually making a little bit of money and even calling this a part time job. Year Number two, I want this to be my full-time freelance work. Maybe I'm not exactly balling out, maybe I'm just eating canned yams seven days a week, but if you can make your passion your job, I can assure you you'll be a lot happier than when you're eating great food doing a job you hate. And from there, I can't tell you what the outcome should be, but set something lofty, something worth working towards, and that's where I'll leave it up to you. Now let's say your goal was to get a date. If you're setting yourself a five-year game plan just to ask a girl out, I feel really bad for you. Maybe cut this down to one month tops. Make your daily game plan to talk to a stranger, whether it be somebody that opened the door for you or someone who is awkwardly on the same elevator as you. Find a way to break up the awkwardness with a conversation. Learn to accept rejection. Maybe every week, ask one of your acquaintances, somebody you actually kind of know, to go and hang out, go for a movie, go for dinner. It doesn't have to be a romantic thing, but just ask somebody who is not in your comfort zone to hang out. After doing this for one month, Take the plunge, ask a girl out, ask a guy out, see how it goes. Yes, rejection is scary, but by doing things bite-sized, by doing it one step at a time, we get ourselves closer to our final destination, where we ultimately want to be. Now we've identified, we've created an action plan, but this is the real hard part. The planning is easy. Now it's time to commit to your vision. There's gonna be days where you'll have zero motivation when you feel like quitting after posting 100 YouTube videos and it feels like you haven't built an audience, after asking the 15th girl out on a date and you've still been rejected. These are the moments that can knock you down and make you feel like it's not gonna happen. I can assure you I've had plenty of these moments in my life, but that is where the people that commit to their vision separate themselves from the crowd. There's a saying that you're the average of the people that you hang around and I 100% believe in it. Surround yourself with people that want the same dreams, want the same passions and will help you get closer to them every single day. If you have the privilege to be here for another five years, would future you be proud of how you used your time? That's a question I often ask myself and it's kept me driven, it's kept me motivated through things when things were hard. For many of us, it's the fear of failure, the fear of rejection that stops us right in our tracks and prevents us from moving forward. But the truth is, it's not the failures who failed, it's actually the people that never tried. By failing, you learn so much every single time, you gain knowledge that no textbook will ever be able to teach you, it prepares you so much for your next venture, and the truth is, sometimes failures bring you to where you're actually meant to be. Failure is not the enemy. It's not living up to your greatest potential that you should fear. Coming back full circle to the three amazing people that I was so fortunate to get to know, Riker, Megan, Alexi, they are three people that took their dreams and they crushed them. They absolutely grinded to make them happen. They were e-biz gurus, they were leaders in the community, and they inspired so many people with everything that they did. Three of them have inspired me like crazy. They've left a powerful imprint that I will never forget. A reminder that tomorrow is not to be taken for granted and that today is the day to make your dreams come true. I want to ask you one last time at the end of this video here to really ask yourself what would you do if you had one year left to live? Some people it might be spending more time with their family, others it might be really just buckling down and making that dream startup happen. challenge you to live like there's a ticking timer above your head and that every single moment here could be your last. I wanted to end today's video by quoting one of my favorite High on Life videos and it's going to be linked down below. I highly recommend you go and check it out right after. It's so inspiring and uh, it goes a little something like this. What do you want to do in your life? 
What makes you tick? What makes you feel awe? Don't be misled into thinking that you're supposed to do anything. You are supposed to do only what you choose to do. The world is vast and full of possibilities. Follow your bliss, get out of your comfort zone, stop looking for reasons why you can't, and look for reasons why you can. And if you can, you should.